Do you find yourself wishing that your robot could solve a complicated maze while also eradicating the pests that threaten to eat all of your grass? Y yes. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Captain Bell's back, yo! Captain Bell's back! Your robot is going to solve Angel Horse Maze while tipping cows. Oh. You're going to master a host of EDR sensors. Uh. Ultrasonic, gyro, that's it, but that's a lot. The code for this is a magnifique. Uh. In this tutorial, we're gonna be tackling part one, which consists of modding Sting, a robot from the last tutorial, Whoa. with an ultrasonic sensor. We're gonna wire that up, and then we're gonna use a gyro to make the turns super accurate. We're getting the main maze solving algorithm dialed in. Let's -a go! First, we gotta mount the ultrasonic sensor, which is gonna tell us when there's a wall in front of the robot. If you want more information on specifically how that ultrasonic sensor works, we have a tutorial from level two linked in the description that you can check out. So grab Sting, detach the front piece, and rotate it 90 degrees so that the two hole wide side is facing the top. And then you're gonna secure it where it overlaps the side pieces. So you're gonna reuse four of those screws. Okay, now grab an ultrasonic sensor and a couple of half inch 832 screws and two caps nuts. And then you're gonna screw in the ultrasonic sensor. And the worst! <laughs> part of this is that you can't center it. This sensor has two wires. It's got an input wire and an output wire. And the input wire has to be in a lower numbered slot than the output wire. In this case, I'm wearing the input wire to digital port five and the output wire to digital port six. And remember to keep the ground facing the outside. Here's a super basic explanation of analog versus digital. A digital sensor is a sensor whose signal has essentially two modes, on or off, true or false, like a touch sensor. It's either pressed or it's not. Analog sensor has a constantly changing signal. <laughs> now we gotta mount the gyro. To mount the gyro, you're gonna grab two one inch 832 screws, two rubber shaft collars, and two caps nuts. You're also gonna grab a servo extension cable. You're gonna secure the gyro next to that ultrasonic sensor. Now, the gyro is an analog sensor, so we're gonna plug it into an analog port on the Cortex. I'm gonna do port eight. You're gonna plug that other end into the gyro with the ground wire by the B. If you're totally new to gyros or you don't remember from level two, that gyro is gonna give us all sorts of information on how far our robots rotated. Before we dive into coding, be sure to get your wiring inspected by the official electrical inspector. Code time. So, we're trying to get the robot to navigate the maze, employing the same strategy we did back in level two. If you hit a wall, check left. If there's still a wall, check right. If there's still a wall, go home. Yay, if there's not a wall in any place, you go forward. We're gonna open up robot C. You're gonna open and name a new program and save it somewhere you'll remember. And then make sure first that it's set to download via USB only and make sure that you have VEX 2.0 Cortex selected as the platform. Okay, first things first, we gotta set up that hardware. So you're gonna go over to the motors and sensors tab and click on the motors tab. We're using the Sting drivetrain so we know that we have the left motor plugged into port one, right motor plugged into port 10, uh, the motor model's 393, and the left side is reversed. And we're gonna set up the ultrasonic sensor called the sonar sensor in Robot C. So we're gonna go to digital sensors ports one through 12. We're gonna name it something like sonar sensor, whatever, in the port where the input cable is. So in our case, that's port five. So then you're gonna set the type of sensor and the units. So I'm gonna use inches for this one. It doesn't actually seem to measure in inches. <laughs> but whatever. And then notice how it automatically assigns the next port as the second port where the output cable is plugged into. Finally, we gotta do some setup for the gyro. We're gonna go to analog sensors one through eight, and we'll name it something like gyro sensor in port eight, and it is a gyro sensor. So we're gonna hit apply and okay. We are going to add the gyro code in a little later on, because first we wanna test the ultrasonic sensor and make sure it's working how we're expecting it to. So inside our main function, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is set up a loop that constantly checks if the sensor sees anything. In ModKit, we use a forever loop. Here, we're gonna use a while loop. While loops run as long as a certain condition is met. We don't have a specific condition we want it to always run. So for our condition, we're gonna put while one equals one or equals equals one, which is always true. Now, inside that loop, we're gonna set up an if-else statement. It's starting to look familiar, right? <laughs> if something comes within a certain range of the sensor, we're gonna do whatever's in between these curly brackets. So if the value of our ultrasonic sensor named sonar sensor is reading is less than, let's say, 10 inches, we're gonna stop the robot. Otherwise, um, let's just set it to go forward at a lowish speed in between the else curly brackets. So I'm gonna give it a one second pause at the beginning and let's save it. So we're gonna test it out real quick. I'm gonna download and it should go forward and stop when something comes in range. Now that we've tested the ultrasonic sensor, we're gonna set up the main framework for our code. I'm gonna take the stop out for a second. And as I'm setting this up, I'm gonna leave comments for myself for what I need to come back and add in later. We're constantly checking for a wall. If there is a wall, I'm gonna want the robot to stop and then turn left 90 degrees, 
Remember, they're not commands yet. They're just comments to remind me to write in the commands in a second. After it checks left, if there's still a wall, we're gonna go inside the new set of curly brackets and we're gonna want it to turn 180 degrees to the right so we can see if there's a wall on the other side. After it turns right, if there's another wall, we want it to turn an additional 90 degrees right so that it'll go back the way it came. If there's no wall at any of the checks, then it's gonna go into the else, which we want to have set to drive forward. With conditionals and loops, you'll probably also see it written like this, where the opening curly bracket is on the same line as the conditional and the else goes on the same line as the closing bracket, like the if goes from here to here and the else goes from here to here. This is a popular way of writing code, so get your eyes used to it. I'm gonna type it the other way because I think it's a little more readable. Let's save our progress so far. Eventually, for the turns, we're gonna use the gyro. But just to make sure that the framework's working, we're gonna start by guessing at the turns manually. These are wall we want to stop, so we'll set the power to each drivetrain motor to zero, and then we'll give it a little time to come to a complete stop. For the 90 left, I'm gonna take a guess at 50 power to each motor for one second, and the left will be negative because it's a left turn, and then we'll have it stop after one second. Guess for 180 right, I'm gonna say, 50 power for two seconds, and then the right side's gonna be negative because it's a right turn. And then for that final 90 degree right turn, we'll say 50 power for one second, right side negative. And just so we can see where one turn ends and another begins, I'm gonna make the robot stop briefly in between each turn, um, and I'm gonna, so aka put a small pause after each time we kill power to the motors. So let's save this and let's try it. So it should check left, there's an obstacle, it checks right, and then it'll come back the way it came. As long as we're close-ish to the turns, we're good. We're just trying to see if it generally works. We're gonna work on accuracy with the gyro. First thing we're gonna do with the gyro in our code is to completely clear any previous readings that the gyro might have on it. So before our while loop starts, we're gonna type this command, which is going to clear it, and then we'll give it a little pause, and then we will redeclare the gyro sensor as an existing gyro sensor. Now this command kicks off a calibration process inside the gyro, so we wanna be sure to give it all the time it needs. It needs at least uh, about 1.2 seconds, so we'll give it one and a quarter seconds. Once it finishes calibrating, it has essentially set its current position to zero degrees. So right in front of it is now established as the zero degree mark. Now this is essentially how you turn with a gyro. So I set up a fresh file so you can see it real easy, but just like the IQs, the EDR gyro counts in positive degrees when turning counterclockwise and negative degrees when turning clockwise. So if I wanted my robot to turn 90 degrees left, I would say while our gyro measures that our current position is less than 90 degrees, we're gonna have it turn left. Once it reaches that 90 degrees, it's gonna exit the while loop and go on to what's below. We have it set to stop. Stop the drivetrain, please. Stop. P.S. Gyro measures in tenths of a degree. So in this case, we put 900 for 90. So as you can see, there are quite a few lines of code that go into making the robot turn with the gyro. Instead of plopping this mess into the middle of our code whenever we want it to turn, we are going to store it in a function and call up the function when we want it to turn which is going to amount to just one line of code. I will show you how to make this magic happen. Functions are just like broadcasting events in ModKit, if you remember. Functions are a special box, if you will, for a series of commands that perform a task together. In this case, that task is turning. To create a function for this turn, you're going to make what is called a forward declaration up here at the top. It basically says, hey, there's a function coming up, so keep an eye out for it. We'll call our function something like 90 left. Don't worry about the void or the parentheses right now. Just know that this is how you create a forward declaration of a function. Now, below, all the way down and outside our main function, we're going to actually create the function. Type void, name of function, parentheses, and then the curly brackets that store the meat. In between those curly brackets is where we're gonna put that whole routine for turning left. While the gyro is sensing that we are at less than 90 degrees, you're gonna turn left, aka counterclockwise, and then when you've reached 90 degrees, you're going to stop. The final step in creating le perfect function is to reset the gyro position before we start turning. This will keep it real simple because then it'll just count the number of degrees you want to go from its current direction that it's facing, not the starting direction. Another option for creating functions is actually just plopping the function up above before the main function. If you go that route, you don't need to create a forward declaration. But I find this method easier. easier. Let's create another function for the second turn. Turns, sees a wall. Now it's gonna turn 180 degrees and check right. So I'm gonna call the function 180 right. All the way down after our 90 left function, let's set it up. So there are two major differences between this function and the 90 left function. So first, inside this function, the robot's turning right instead of left. Second, we're gonna have to switch up our degree count. So we want it to turn 180 degrees right. That's clockwise, so it's actually gonna be counting down to negative 180 degrees. As we're turning, we're counting down. So what we wanna say is as long as our current position is greater than negative 180, turn right. The final function is the final 
turn. After turning right, the robot discovers that there is yet another wall and it must go back the way it came. We gotta create one last function for that final 90 degree turn right. So for declaration, I'm gonna call it 90 right. Set up, it's exactly the same as 180 right except it's only until negative 90 degrees. Upon testing, if you find that the robot turns a little too much or a little too little, you can make tiny adjustments to the goal degrees. And don't forget that you can edit speeds and distance away from the wall too. That's a, that could be important. Final step's gonna be to call up these functions when we need them most. We're gonna go back up to the main function. Oh, and oh look, we can replace the stupid guess at a left turn by simply calling the name of the function. 90 left, I choose you! <laughs> For the next turn, 180 right, I choose you! 90 right, I choose a you. Oh, this is the best, this is the best. You can even put the commands in the else that make the robot go forward in their own function called go forward if you want. And you can call it up there instead of giving each motor the this whole reset slash calibration routine for the gyro could go inside of its own function called like gyro activate. And then you can call it up whenever you need to reset that count to zero. It's functions inside of functions. This sort of breaking steps down into functions is called functional decomposition. We are just scratching the surface, my friends. Well, I mean, what are you waiting for? Let's go test it. Let's go test it. Oh. Dope! Once what? you've got this part of the code dialed in, you're gonna clink in the link. You're gonna click the link in the description to go to the next tutorial in which we build the cow killing arm. Nope, the cow tipping arm. Yeah. We don't kill cows here. <laughs> yeah.